disclaimer. I am not a mechanic, A&P, AMT, AME. I am not a CFI, CFII. I uh, think you get the point. If you have any questions, concerns, etc., seek the advice of experts. I'm a private pilot who owns a plane and is trying to give back to the aviation community by sharing my own experience in aircraft ownership. Please refer to your aircraft's POH as every aircraft is different. And remember, we're all in this together, so be safe out there. Afternoon, everybody. Just hanging out at the hangar. Can't really fly because we have a storm approaching, and as soon as I get up there, I know we're going to get slammed by it. One of those uh, summer storms there. So, anywho, I thought I'd take a minute since I'm here uh, to go over the. Well, I'm still trying to find a good name for it, but basically the air conditioning cooler or the air conditioning I use for my plane. Um, so, I found. Uh, one of these guys online that they're selling uh, at a few stores, pilot shops or whatnot that are going for 600 bucks, something like that. Uh, sometimes a little bit more depending on, uh, it seemed like the capacity size, which was kind of weird just because it carries more ice, it costs more, I don't know. But anyway, I uh, decided to look around and see if I could build one myself. And I think actually we kind of got to the point where we made a better one. So let me show you real quick how I did it, and then I will list all the stuff in the uh, description below. So if you want to uh, order all the stuff for yourself so you can make one, it's really easy. Uh, I don't know why these aren't in a lot of planes other than they're just kind of ugly, uh, but they work really well. Um, so basically it all starts with this fan. It's pushing air down into the cooler there. Um, I put a switch on there, just a regular uh, AC switch. Uh, not too worried about the contacts eroding on this, uh, seeing that it's a DC system because there's not a lot of DC being passed through here uh, or amps. Um, I got kind of the more beefier size switch just in case. It's up to your uh, discretion if you want uh, an actual uh, DC switch or if you want to get all fancy, you can put a nice beefy potentiometer on there. To control the speed of the fan because literally sometimes it gets really actually kind of cold up there um, especially when you get some altitude before you or below you um, it gets kind of cold um, but I'd rather uh, be cool in the cockpit than uh, burning up and having to wipe my face off and whatnot so uh, pretty much the air goes directly through here and it's forced into the main section of the cooler here, which you want to have uh, about an inch or two of water down here because what happens is, is that the water will be sucked up this pipe here and then it will be uh, branched off and go down into this uh, radiator. This radiator is used to cool uh, computers for liquid cooling in uh, PCs, uh, high performance gaming PCs or whatnot. Um, the water will go in, will go through all the ridges, will cool off, and again, this air is going, being pushed down through the ice, through the ice and through this radiator, makes the temperature difference quite a bit. And then, the water that has warmed up since it's gone through here will be cycled back down, and it will go back into the tub. Um, I have actually a little uh, tea right here. This is the water that will spray out and cycle back. You want to make sure that this is kind of uh, in the upward position. You want to have the water circulating over the ice so this base water down here is as cool as possible. Um, I made it a little fancier um, by spending a little bit of money to get this brass fitting uh, because when you uh, eventually get back after a day of flying this will probably last for about four hours or so um, you want to empty the water, all you have to do is do this, stick it outside or outside of your plane there, if I can do it right, and then it'll just empty all the water out. And then once you're done, close the valve, and again the water will cycle through. Again, water is sucked up through this tube, 
this little pump, which is, is a submersible pump. You can actually put this in the water if you'd like. I just uh, kept it out here um, just because I liked it and it seemed to work better. Then the tube falls down the water, goes through here. The air again blowing against the ice, the water, and this guy. And then it will cycle through and dump the water back on. Uh, like I said, this will last for about four hours. Uh, I actually recommend um, block ice, and it took me a second to figure out where in the world am I going to get block ice. However, if you have any type of Tupperware or those cheap Rubbermaid um, large uh, reusable containers for like lunches or whatnot, what I do is I've got a freezer, and then I fill those things up with water, put them in the freezer, and then I have large chunks of ice that will literally last all day long. Um, so after the air is pushed through all of this, I have uh, one of these little corrugated uh, pipes here and I opened it up because I wanted to make sure I had all of this surface area that's pushing that through. Um, this is going to be your coldest spot right here so you want to make sure you take advantage of all of that and if you notice when it closes down, it's right up against that um, radiator. Now you do want a little bit um, of spacing just because you want a little bit more flow. However, you want it pretty close to that. Um, and again, this is just a corrugated tubing that you can get from Home Depot. Very, very inexpensive and you can actually add extensions if you want to put this in the back of your plane. You can add extensions to bring it all the way up over the second seat. Uh, I actually put this in my back seat um, and it, it works just fine. Um, again, you know, if you're really hot day and you're loaded with people, you want to make sure that you account for this weight. Um, so when you make your calculations here. And then this can extend. With one hand it's very difficult, but you get the point. And then you can bend it over. So usually I extend this all the way up and then I bend it over and it's pretty much right in the back of my head, which is great. And then to power the pump and the fan, because those are the only two things that need to be powered, I went uh, I don't know if you'd call this fancy or redneck, but I used a um, little uh, connector off of a RC battery. Um, you can get these anywhere, but I just wanted a point of connection just to make it a little bit safer. Uh, and then I've got a cord that hooks right into the battery and then hooks right in here. Easy enough. And this uh, battery is really inexpensive. They use these batteries on the Verizon backups. They cost $12, I'll send the link. Um, but really super inexpensive and they're 7.2 uh, amp hours, which last a very long time in the system because it doesn't draw a lot of amp roots, uh, amps rather. Uh, they're lead acid sealed battery and they're actually um, made for warm, uh, rough environments. They won't spill out, they won't do anything like that. So uh, I don't have any issues carrying that in my plane. If you have a power bank um, or a Samsung phone for some senses, uh, it's going to be a lot more dangerous than this guy here. So I'm going to stop this real quick and then I'm going to see if I can find that plug, hook it up, and let you hear the power of this fan. This fan is actually an exhaust fan uh, for boats to push out all of the um, fuel, uh, fuel exhaust from the boat so it doesn't blow up. So give me just a second. to red, black to black, good to go. Another little fail safe here, making sure those connections uh, are the right polarity. And I'll let you just listen to the power of this thing. quite a bit of air. I know that uh, a lot of times these phones have leveling on there so um, you can't hear the full extent but when you're in the air and you have your headset on oh man you can't even hear a thing it's great. Um, so it's definitely 
<laughs> it's definitely less than an engine, so you don't have anything to worry about that. I guess one of the uh, positives to flying in a smaller aircraft is you have that headset uh, that cancels out all those uh, engine noises, and it'll definitely cancel out this guy. So this whole thing, I'm sure everybody has a cooler laying around. We found this in the back. We actually had two coolers, and this is the crappiest of the two, just in case uh, I failed on it. But uh, I've been using it uh, for the entire summer. It works great, and I think I've spent under 100 bucks for the entire thing. Um, so it's pretty awesome. Oh, one other thing. If you want to get uh, fancy on there to stop the leaks because this fan is so powerful, um, I just put a little silicone on there. A tube of silicone, indoor-outdoor type from Home Depot. When I got this stuff right here, it cost $2.00. Um, it's great stuff to keep everything sealed up. Um, it's extremely difficult to, especially with the ice, tip this over so you don't have anything to worry there. And if you do worry about it, and most planes have the straps in the back so you can just uh, strap it down. Uh, I know the first time I flew with it, I was so worried that I was going to fall over for some reason. I strapped it down, and the second time I just kept it in the back, and then uh, I figured out, well, heck, it can just rest in the back seat, and I've had no problems with it. So. There you go. I will list all the uh, ingredients in the description there, and hopefully you guys will be able to save quite a few hundred dollars on it. All right. Be safe out there. We're all in this together.